Wano is the arc of Joy Boy, the dawn, and mixing the past with the present. Have you ever wondered why, from a writing standpoint, Oda chose this arc to reveal that Luffy is Joy Boy? Or why he did it while fighting Kaido, whose name translates to Joy Boy? Well, what if I told you that it's to foreshadow something huge from the Void Century, and to write one of the best forms of themes ever in any story ever written? Wizard of Oz here today, and today let me tell you how Kaido vs Luffy will go down as one of the best fights of all time, from a writing perspective and how this foreshadows one of the biggest links to the Void Century. I'll expose the actual themes toward the end of the video, so I hope you stay tuned to see what they are. This is my part 1 of the hidden themes of Wano, and now let's get into it. Chapter 1043, Luffy officially was announced to be Joy Boy. He was announced as it by a reliable source in Zunisha was also a part of Joy Boy's crew and confirmed that he hasn't heard the Drums of Liberation in 800 years. Revelations are being unraveled in a manner that was a bit unexpected. The unexpected confirmation by Zunisha made it such a hype moment that will be remembered forever. We can all agree that this scene will go down as arguably the most iconic moment in all of One Piece. Even with saying all this, there is a small, hidden, yet key detail hinting at the original Joy Boy who lived in the Void Century. It's the fact that Luffy became Joy Boy on top of Onigashima. It's all about the setting of where and when Luffy became Joy Boy. He didn't become Joy Boy at Wano, at Fishman Island, at Skypea, at Zo, at Alabasta, at Marineford, at Impel Down, at Dress Rosa, or at Water 7. No, he officially became confirmed as the Joy Boy while at a near-death experience on a giant floating skull. Now I'm not saying that Luffy was strong enough to become Gear 5 in the Alabasta arc or in Ennis Lobby or in any of the locations that I mentioned. What I'm trying to say is that Oda chose specifically Onigashima and Wano arc to make Luffy Joy Boy. Why would Luffy become Joy Boy in Onigashima but not at Ennis Lobby where many people believe the One Piece is located? What makes Onigashima more important than Ennis Lobby to Joy Boy? What if it's because Onigashima is the Joy Boy from 800 years ago? I believe Luffy becoming Joy Boy in Onigashima was no coincidence whatsoever, and Oda wrote one of the best forms of parallelism that I've ever seen. For all we know, the location of Onigashima could even have something to do with Luffy coming back to life with a different heartbeat. In case you're new to the channel or new to my Onigashima is Joy Boy theory, I'll lay out some of the facts real quick to give you a good idea as to why I believe this. If you've already heard it, then feel free to skip to about 4 minutes in. I'll leave the timestamp in the description as well. My belief is that Oda has been foreshadowing this in plain sight and basically just telling us that Ors is Joy Boy. First of all, I call Onigashima Ors the first, since Ors Jr is actually Ors the third, which would make Ors and Thriller Bark Ors the second, and then Onigashima would be Ors the first. This does get pretty confusing with timelines, but Togi's time travel plays a big factor. Next, I believe Oda foreshadowed it when he put Luffy's shadow into Ors in Thriller Bark. Since Luffy is the new version of Joy Boy, Oda is foreshadowing that Joy Boy was an Ors. The next foreshadow is that the giant straw hat scene and the introduction scene of Ors is practically the same thing, showing the parallels that the giant straw hat belonged to an Ors. Another thing is the Var statues in Skypea that are all statues of the Ors race and the Sun God altar has Ors signs all over it, showing us that Ors was the Sun God back in the Void Century. If you don't think he was, then how come Ors' name in Japanese is the exact same kanji as the Norse Sun God's name in Dungeon and Dragons? The One Piece wiki states this, showing that it's not a coincidence. With all this being said, the revolutionaries, Blackbeard Pirates, and Rocks Pirates all have Or symbols as their Jolly Rogers. I believe that they all know a lot about the ancient history and have an idea of how important Ors' existence was to the world. There's seriously like hundreds of more things I can go over, but I can't go over all of them right now because it's too much to explain. If you're interested, I'd recommend checking out my Ors and Onigashima theories to get the whole picture. Alright, now back to talking about Wano. The location of Onigashima could be some sort of prophecy as well, that a man in 800 years will become Joy Boy on this head or island. Most people don't look into the fact that there's a Poneglyph in Onigashima and into its importance. I can't wait for Robin to read this Poneglyph because I truly believe it'll have something written about Joy Boy and the importance of the island. Maybe Kaido even translated the Poneglyph somehow and stayed there knowing the fate that it holds. Remember that his two biggest interests in life is Death and Joy Boy. I've heard great theories in the One Piece community saying that maybe he's so obsessed with Death because you must die to become Joy Boy. Well, what if he's at Onigashima because it is Joy Boy and he believes it is? While fighting Yamato, Kaido tells her that he wants her to protect Wano for him and for her to be its guardian deity. This shows that he has real plans for the future of Wano and that it's a special place for him. Another 
other thing Kaido tells Yamato during this fight is, I'm here because it's Wano. This again shows that Wano is very important to him and in his eyes the most important to Joy Boy. Somehow he figured out Wano's importance to the Void Sentry and took it over while Odin was out with the Roger Pirates. I find it very interesting that he chose to specifically live in Onigashima and not in Wano. Even after Odin's death, he still chose to live out there. Why would he not move into the land of Wano, or the castle of the Kazuki clan? I mean if Wano is so important to him, why would he not live in the land instead of some giant Oni school? It's not like anyone's gonna stop him from doing whatever he wants. What if the real reason he chooses to live in Onigashima and keep his base there is because it's the most important thing that is at Wano that he wishes to protect and keep? What if Onigashima was more important to Kaido's dream of finding Joy Boy than even Wano itself? Both Wano and Onigashima hold generations of history on their backs. Onigashima is also proved to be important to the Void Sentry since it does have a Poneglyph in it, which shows that the Kazuki clan decided to create a Poneglyph inside the school 800 years ago. Knowing a lot about the Oni race and Joy Boy, Kaido specifically chose the most Joy Boy related place in the whole world to live in, which would be the Skull of the Lurking Legend. At the beginning of my video, I also claimed that I believe Kaido is a microcosm representation of the Joy Boy, but isn't the Joy Boy that is to come in the Revelation. I've already discussed this thought in previous videos, but it all starts with his name being Kaido since Kaido in Japanese can be translated to Joy Boy. I believe this is a clue that is foreshadowing to the original Joy Boy being an Oni. In one of my videos I also explained how I believe Joy Boy had multiple devil fruits and that the zone type that he had was Kaido's dragon or fish fruit. Seems less likely now though since we know that Luffy's fruit is a zone type. We also see Kaido trying to act like Joy Boy when he tells King that he's gonna change the world. With all this being said, Luffy vs Kaido is basically Joy Boy vs Joy Boy. Luffy being the actual Joy Boy while Kaido is the false Joy Boy and representing the old Joy Boy. He is also most likely some sort of lineage to Joy Boy since he is part of the Oni race. Kaido obviously isn't actually Joy Boy but he's either based off of it, trying to be like it, or a failed version of it. It seems that you need the gum gum fruit to become Joy Boy so Kaido honestly never even had a chance. Luffy vs Kaido isn't the only thing that's foreshadowing and a part of this theme. There's been many more little hints about Joy Boy placed in hindsight. For example, we get introduced to Nika and what Nika is for the first time in Onigashima when Who's Who brings it up to Jinbei. Like I said before about Luffy being confirmed as Joy Boy, how is it that we didn't learn about a sun god Nika until Wano? Like there's no way no one in Skypiea, Fishman Island, or Wano knew about the sun god Nika legend. There's just no way Who's Who is the only guy in the vast world of One Piece that knows and brings it up. Maybe Oda chose to specifically tell us what Nika is in Onigashima because it has direct ties to it. I believe him bringing up Nika and us being introduced to its existence in Onigashima is going to be a big thing that we look back in the future to say, Oda is the GOAT for foreshadowing all these things in this way. Onigashima itself is the arc of Nika and Joy Boy for a reason and it's all played out so well. Another little detail about Joy Boy is that we learn about Zunisha being one of Joy Boy's crew members. Yet again, of course it's not in Wano that we learn this, but it's at Onigashima, the separate island. I wonder what Zunisha thinks about the huge flying skull through the sky, and if he even recognizes it. I hope there's a foreshadowed scene at the end of the arc where maybe as the Straw Hats are leaving, Momo talks to Zunisha and asks him who the actual Joy Boy was back in the day. And then maybe it'll cut out for now, but then later on in the story we find out that he said, you're looking at him, while they're looking at Onigashima. Either this or he just tells Momo that Joy Boy was the place where the raid happened. Maybe as the voice cuts out we see Momo's eyes pop out in surprise. I don't know, if this doesn't happen I don't really care, but I just thought it'd be a funny and crazy scene if it did. Another thing is that Zunisha's size should also tell you something about the Joy Boy crew, cause if he's in it then that means that someone stronger and possibly bigger could have been the pirate captain. I honestly think Joy Boy's crew and all was filled with the gargantuan creatures of the world. If Shirahoshi's size fits along with the ancient fishmen, then I'd assume Poseidon was a giant fish as well. Poseidon, Zunisha, Onigashima, Elbaths, and other ancient giants were all within the same group and all worked with each other to fight the celestial dragons. I know Onigashima's size is way too big for the giant straw head and Mary Joyce, but that's where the human human fruit, Model Nika, comes into play. The last connection has already kind of been talked about since it has ties to becoming Joy Boy, and that would be the reveal of Luffy's devil fruit. Obviously, how I said before with other events happening, we learn the truth of the gum gum fruit while 
Luffy awakens it on Onigashima to not only reveal Gear 5, but to also reveal that the fruit is a Zoan human human fruit, model Nika. The fact that it's a human human fruit makes perfect sense with Ors being Joy Boy, since now we can confirm that he could have shrunk down into a human form. I've already said countless times before that if Ors was Joy Boy, he would have definitely been able to shrink, since we've seen Luffy shrink after using Gear 3, but this honestly works even better. Some people in the community are now saying that Joy Boy may have been a human that could grow into a giant form with the latest news, but I'm actually on the complete opposite side of this. I think that Joy Boy was an ancient giant who would shrink down into a much smaller size. The giant straw hat in Pangaea Castle lets people think that whoever was the owner of the hat was a pretty big size. Now Onigashima was obviously way too big for this hat, because I mean, the scale isn't even close. However, now with the confirmation of the Nika fruit, we know that if Joy Boy was an ancient giant, he could have gone into somewhat of a human form with the fruit being a Zoan. Maybe when he transformed into this full human form, he even lost his horns and wasn't just the size of a human, but also had the shape of a human. If you look at Ors, their body is built very differently compared to a human or even an Elbaf giant. Their arms are very long with huge forearms, their legs aren't very big, they also have huge stomachs with strangely shaped chest and heads. I would think that this body form would be able to become more humanly when he either goes gear 5 or into his human form. This would explain why Nika looks like a human and not an Oni. It would also explain why in Fishman Island, King Neptune referred to Joy Boy as being a human or a man and not a giant. Although he obviously doesn't actually know who Joy Boy was, he is referring to what has been passed down for years and years. With everything I've now explained, the hidden theme for Wano for this video is the theme of Joy Boys. The overall theme I've explained is Joy Boy versus Joy boy on Joy Boy. Another way to go about it could be Luffy becoming Joy Boy while on Joy Boy. Oda masterfully wrote the details in the story of One Piece to make it hit even harder when you look back at it. Anyways, what do you guys think of this theory slash analysis? Let me know down in the comments any thoughts. By the way, this is only part 1 of the hidden themes of Wano, and in my next part, I'll be deeply discussing the dawn and breaking down Toki's quote, You are the moon unaware of the dawn. I'll post that as fast as I can, and if you like this video and like this kind of content, please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video, and please remember to have a great day.